Hello and welcome to another PortWorks demo. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's performance. We're going to show you how you can supercharge your Kubernetes persistent storage by using a new feature in PortWorks Enterprise 2.12 named PXFast. Now, many of you might already be using applications within Kubernetes that require persistent storage, such as Mongo or Kafka. You might use Jenkins for your CI CD pipelines. You might be using things like Elasticsearch. Now, you probably have things like SSDs or spinning disk on your hyperconverged servers or your cloud instances that you're running your Kubernetes worker nodes on. And this is where PortWorks comes in. PortWorks creates pools of storage from these backing storage devices and creates a PortWorks storage cluster from which we can carve out persistent volumes within Kubernetes and provide file systems or block devices to your applications that require persistent storage. Now this worked great for many years and PortWorks has been the leader in performance in Kubernetes persistent storage. But as we saw hardware evolve and things like NVMe devices start being placed into servers or becoming available for cloud instances, customers were asking for better performance of their persistent volumes that were backed by these NVMe devices. So we've done a couple of things. We've replaced the storage backend we've used historically with a better performing backend called PXStore v2. And you'll see this later in the demo. In addition, we've made significant improvements in our IO path with regard to how kernel space to user space transitions occur. And that's where PXFast comes in. PXFast allows you to take advantage of the higher IOPS, the higher throughput, and the lower latency that these NVMe devices can provide. So, just how good is the performance with PXFast? I mean, I did claim we're going to supercharge your persistent storage within Kubernetes, right? Let's take a quick look. So let's look at the test harness system that I'm using to test PXFast today. We'll run a kubectl git node, and you can see we have seven nodes here, three control plane nodes and four worker nodes, all running Ubuntu 1804.5 with a 5.4 kernel, and we're running Kubernetes 1.24.6. Now, I've already installed PortWorks onto this cluster, so we'll take a quick look here at the storage cluster and make sure that it's online. And we're good to go there. Next, let's take a look at one of those nodes that is participating in the storage cluster. And we'll run a pixie cuddle status to take a look at the status of the PortWorks cluster. You can see we have eight pools in the storage cluster. And each one of those pools is backed by a Intel P4610 NVMe device of about one and a half terabytes of capacity each. So this gives us a total of around 34 terabytes worth of capacity in our PortWorks storage cluster. Now, I have three of our nodes participating as storage nodes in the PortWorks cluster, and we've got one storageless node, which we'll run some test harnesses on, like PGBench, and we'll look at the results later on in the video. Next, let's take a look at the storage class that we'll be using to test PXFast. So we'll run a describe on this storage class, and you can see the parameter here with fast path equal to true. And this means that PXFast is enabled on this storage class. You'll also note that we're running a one replica configuration for the testing today. 
Now, we're going to be running a handful of performance tests today. And as I mentioned earlier, when NVMe devices came out, they really increased our storage capabilities in terms of IOPS and throughput and latency. But we're also seeing server manufacturers really pack these NVMe devices into their systems for high density. So, there's not a whole lot of software out there that can really keep up with those high-density servers that have multiple NVMe devices in them. And we wanted to see how PXFast kept up with those. So, first we're going to be using FIO and trying to saturate each worker node in our Portworx storage cluster. And each FIO instance is going to deploy a pod, which has its own dedicated PVC and associated persistent volume, on each one of our storage pools within the Portwork storage cluster. First, we're going to run a random read-write 60-40% mix with a 4K block size to see how PXFast can keep up with IOPS requirements. And for that test, we're going to run 24 file pods with three file jobs per pod, which means that we'll have eight file pods per worker node in the storage cluster. The second test that we'll run will be a sequential write test with a 256K block size. And this is going to test throughput, write throughput specifically, to those NVMe devices. This third test that we'll run will be a sequential read test with, again, a 256K block size. And for these sequential tests where we're testing throughput, again, we'll have 24 file pods. And this time we'll run 16 jobs per pod to make sure that we can saturate the bandwidth down to those NVMe devices. And again, that means that we'll be running 8 file pods per worker node. So let's go ahead and get to the testing. Now, I've installed Grafana on this cluster so that we can kind of have a visual representation of what's going on in terms of IOPS and throughput. And you can see that we've got a very idle cluster right now. Not a whole lot of I.O. going on. So let's go ahead and kick off our first test, which will be that 4K random read-write test. And let's see if we can get some good IOPS numbers out of this three node cluster. So we'll switch back to Grafana here and we'll just watch this test run live. Okay, looks like our test is ramped down and we're complete. And I'm going to call that close to 3 million IOPS on average between all of our cluster nodes using px fast so uh, we'll get the exact numbers here after we run these last two tests so let's go ahead and move on to the next set of tests for throughput and we'll just go ahead and kick off this 256k sequential write test and switch back to grafana and this time Go ahead and look at that upper right graph in Grafana for the total cluster write throughput. And that's going to show the amount of bandwidth that we're writing down to all of these NVMe devices across our three worker nodes. So let's go ahead and watch this test run to completion. Okay, looks like that test is complete now, and I'm going to call that maybe, uh, let's shoot for 46, 47 gigabytes per second of throughput across the cluster. So, let's take a look at this final test, and then we'll look at the actual results. And we all know the drill here now, so let's kick off our sequential read test. 
And in Grafana this time, we're going to be looking at the bottom right graph, which is going to show our cluster read throughput across our three worker nodes. Okay, looks like our final test is complete now. And looks like we hit maybe 72, 75 gigabytes per second. So let's go ahead and I'll compile these file results and let's take a look at the actual numbers. All right, so I've been able to compile our actual results from FIO to see how PXFast was able to keep up with these high-density NVMe servers. So let's take a look. Again, we ran three different tests, one geared more towards IOPS and the other towards throughput. So, for our random read-write 6040 mix, we were able to hit just over 3.2 million IOPS, which gives us a hair over a million IOPS per server. For sequential write, we were able to hit 47.05 gigabytes per second, and for sequential read, we hit 69.79 gigabytes per second. So, pretty good in terms of being able to keep up with all of those NVMe devices that were in our servers. So, we've been able to see how PXFast can keep up with these servers with high densities of NVMe devices and operate at scale. But let's face it, not everybody runs their servers at that 75 to 90% utilization. And not all solutions in the marketplace can, can really keep up with that type of config. So let's go ahead and take a look at how some of the other solutions in the industry perform compared to PXFast with a single NVMe device. So we decided to take a couple of the more popular options to port works in the industry and compare them and benchmark them using file profiles that you might see in performance reports from other vendors. Now, you can see that the 100% random read statistics, one of those vendors is pretty close to PXFast and PortWorks. But when we look at the 100% random write statistics, you can see that PXFast and PortWorks over doubled the number of IOPS and cut the latency in half compared to the other options in the industry. Now when we look at throughput numbers, you can see that PXFast provides almost 3 gigabytes per second of throughput here on sequential read, which is very close to that Intel spec for the P4610 NVMe device. We see similar results with the sequential write metrics, where PXFast and PortWorks, again, are bumping up against that ceiling in terms of the specs provided from Intel compared to the other options in the industry. Now, when we look at the random read-write mix, you can see that the results are similar with PXFast and PortWorks leading the pack in both read IOPS and write IOPS, and you can see the considerable decrease in latency as compared to the other options. Now, we all know that FIO is great and it's a wonderful benchmarking tool for storage, but we also wanted to show what you can expect in terms of application performance with PXFast. So, we decided to add in a PGBench benchmark, where we're benchmarking the application performance of a fairly large Postgres database. We used a 500 gig PVC, initialized that with a scale factor of 20,000, which gave us a 350 gig database. And you can see here that PXFast with PortWorks doubled the transactions per second 
over the competition and reduce that latency by half as compared to the other options that are out there. Let's review the benefits that PXFast brings before we wrap up today. Number one is efficiency. You've seen how PXFast can handle workloads running on servers with high densities of NVMEs, avoiding that over-provisioning of storage and allowing you to focus on the capacity and performance ratio within your hyperconverged servers. You've also seen how PXFast enables us to maximize performance from those NVMe devices and take advantage of the high IOPS and throughput and low latency for Kubernetes persistent storage and their associated applications. PXFast allows better scaling and enables those consistent I.O. capabilities across multiple workloads within your cluster. And finally, PXFast allows you to tier your storage, take advantage of multiple storage pools, and really focused on optimizing cost and right-sizing storage devices within your servers or cloud instances. If you'd like to try PXFast yourself today, please contact your Portworx sales representative or cloud native architect to enable PXFast and start supercharging your Kubernetes persistent storage. Thanks for spending your time with me today to learn about PXFast and Portworx Enterprise. I look forward to our next session together where we can learn about even more great Portworx features.